Thank you so much. Thank you for the kind introduction. And thank you, Bansi sir, Dr. Dutul, and Dr. Narmitra and Dean PhD for this invitation. Uh, I'm trying to make my talk as small as and as practical as possible. So this is a very common scenario where we come across a first time diagnosed uncontrolled diabetes during pregnancy. Uh, maybe at Metro's it is a different trend, I don't know, but where I pr practice as a tier two city where the BB uh, screening is very less, very less, and sometimes it is like missed also. So uh, I will be talking more, but it will be, uh, more about my setting, but what I did in my patient, but it will be certainly useful to you all also. So these are two major references I have used. I mean, they, these are two very good uh, manuscripts, I would say. One should read them. Uh, this is first case. I have taken two cases. First case is very simple. Primary gravita, 29 years old, 28 weeks of pregnancy. She has BMI pre-gestational 27 kilogram per meter square and mother has type 2 diabetes. Uh, we usually screen, even uh, at, we all usually screen at 28 weeks of pregnancy. So fasting was 110. 2 hours post 75 gram of 158. So you know this is GDM, Dr. Dakshita has already well explained uh, what is to be done also, it has been uh, discussed in detail. Now coming to this actually case, so this is a 32-year-old uh, female, second gravida, one living uh, baby, now presently coming with 10 weeks of pregnancy and pre-pregnancy BMI is 28.5 kilogram per meter square. She is moderately sedentary, fasting is random was 182 and hence we uh, exposed her to OGTT 75 gram and the fasting was 132 and post meal was 252 and HbA1c was 8.8, though it is not a standard, but well, there might be some fallacies in HbA1c during pregnancy, but still we did it and it was 8.8. So what is your opinion about it? Should we advise termination and or continue? First uh, option, advise termination, please raise hands. I think no one, that's great. And. Uh, Continue with anti-hyperglycemic measures, I mean the standard way. Only few, what, what about the others, not even with both the <laughs> thing. So uh, this is a very common scenario. There was a one prospective goal. I'm not going into very much details of this, but I'm giving you the only important point, points. So pregnant women with previous diabetes mellitus, they were counseled about pregnancy. 64 women were there, 85% also agreed that they were counseled. But still they had 9.1% HbA1c at conception, 8.4% at trimester and uh, first trimester and 6.8% at third trimester. Only 16% had the HbA1c of less than 6.5%. So we are not the only one who are coming across even after telling people behave, the women behaved like that. So, what are the complications? We know very well that everyone has gone through these complications. The reasons for these complications, maternal as well as the neonatal fetal complications has been explained very well. The diabetic embryopathy by Dr. Richard in the last term. What are the, what is the relation of the blood glucose with the complications? So there is no specific glucose threshold at which obstetric and neonatal complications significantly increased in the Harpo study. But usually there is one reference which refers uh, HbA1c about more than 10% pregnancy should be avoided. So uh, may, they have not really categorically said to terminate pregnancy because it is a decision of the parents and not, we, we can just advise about it. The ultimate decision makers will be the parents. But certainly more than 10% uh, HbA1c there will be more complications. About, if the HbA1c is 6.6% at periconception and it's more than 6.1% at third trimester, there is significant association with fetal and or infant death. And you can see the poor outcome. So if the HbA1c is less than 7.2%, there are poor outcome which are, we, we know all the poor outcomes, I'm not going to do that, so they will be less than 12%. And if the HbA1c is more than 10.3%, the poor outcomes will be around 79%. With every 1% increase in the HbA1c, the risk is increased by 5.5%. Yes, this is a, uh, a flow chart summarizing the contemporary nomenclature. So we all know the first, this one, pre-gestational diabetes. Coming to the hyperglycemia in pregnancy, Dakshita and the previous speakers have already spoken about it. So over diabetes or diabetes in pregnancy, these are the two similar things. But GDM, it can be early GDM or it can be the standard GDM. So what is the difference between early GDM and the regular GDM? So uh, tomorrow, Dr. Uh, 
Firdos is going to talk about it, but uh, this this paper which is there, it Endocrine Society paper, it says that the 24 weeks prior, if the GDM is diagnosed, the values of blood glucose are into the GDM range, and if it is diagnosed before 24 weeks, it is early GDM, and after 24 weeks, it's a standard GDM. So, uh, because just now Dr. Dakshita said it is, it can be pre-gestational diabetes if it is before, if it is early. So, how to differentiate that? So, what are what is my thought process? I will just share with you. So, when the placental hormones will start working that will be around 8 to 12 weeks of pregnancy so prior to that especially prior to eight weeks if the diabetes is diagnosed it has to be probably pre-gestational and from 10 8 to 10 week onwards up to 24 weeks we can call it as early GDM though uh, it's not categorically said everywhere but it is it is it's like that why to differentiate this pre-gestational early and standard GDM so probably out of these three forms, the over diabetes, early and standard GDM, standard GDM is the probably the mildest form, followed by the early GDM and followed by the worst outcome is seen in diabetes or uh, over diabetes in pregnancy. Stress of pregnancy, we know there is progressive insulin resistance, beta cell decompensation. So this patient, he, she can be either blood glucose normal or pre-diabetes and it has because of this stress has progressed to over diabetes or she already has a pre-existing diagnosed diabetes, we don't know about this. Over diabetes, as I said, it's a severe form, high risk of adverse outcomes. Early diagnosis, first trimester uh, over diabetes has uh, like probably undiagnosed pre-existing diabetes as I said it's also predictive of postpartum diabetes so which patient is in the presently at present in pregnancy having blood, high blood glucose this over diabetes is likely to have postpartum diabetes after pregnancy though not each and every pregnant over diabetic woman will have diabetes postpartum Similarly, the over diabetes, which is detected at 24 to 28 weeks of gestation, that is, I, I am supposing everyone knows the definition of over diabetes, so I'm not going into that. So it can be a carryover effect or a fresh development induced by gestation. These are few studies. I mean, these are very good studies, and they have studied the uh, like uh, they have compared the outcomes associated with over diabetes comparison of over diabetes with early GDM, you can say. So everywhere there is there was more problem with over diabetes, over diabetes, that is higher prevalence of retinopathy, PIH, increased premature birth, emergency cesarean section, preeclampsia, large for gestational weight, everywhere. Only one study from Korea, it showed that even with over diabetes, if we do aggressive glycemic control, there will be no difference in the outcomes except the large for gestational age babies. Probably, uh, though it is said that the uh, large for gestational age baby, the um, start will be at around 28 weeks of uh, pregnancy, but it's, it may not be true. It may be as early as 14 to 16 weeks or so. So for her, we, for these patients, over diabetes, we need aggressive glycemic management. So I'm talking about overall over diabetes and this patient also. Insulin with strict monitoring, which has been already covered, monitoring for vascular complication and co close surveillance postpartum. This can be the ABCD EFG approach. So assessment after at regular intervals after the delivery, breastfeeding, contraception, diet and exercise, family support and goals for next like prevention of next pregnancy or how to control blood glucose in the next pregnancy. So coming to the case again. So what I did, yes, medical nutrition therapy. Uh, she had borderline high PIH, so I had to give her levetolol also, aspirin also. We started basal bolus and titration of insulin doses according to the six point or four point profile i did six point profile in her most of the insulin treated patients we do six point profile which is a better criteria only maybe just just pure gdm which are 28 weeks which are a milder form where we can go with the four point profile we did nt scan the nuchal translucency can scan at 12 weeks because hba1c was high and certainly whenever the hba1c is more than 7.5 i think we should go for the nt scan and routinely anomaly scan are also done which are 18 and 26 weeks nst maybe uh, in the third trimester every 15 days we did and as per my obstetrician's choice we go we went ahead with the plant cs and she had postpartum diabetes when that is uh, i'm lucky that my obstetrician does uh, a screening ultrasound every time whenever my patient goes to her the anomaly scans and all everything other is like simple screening and she advises them for the test according to that that may be one important uh, investigations i feel clinically so to conclude 
over diabetes in pregnancy has this is a distinct hyperglycemic condition we have to think it if you speak about even early diabetes early gdm it may progress to only gdm uh, at, at the 28 weeks 24 to 28 weeks or it may pro progress to over diabetes also but there are no studies as such that which early gdm will progress to over diabetes and which will not it's a uh, over diabetes is a severe end spectrum of hip high risk of adverse outcomes aggressive uh, management early insulin is always helpful and close follow up are needed yes so thank you thank you very much for the